What's happening, Pod Squad? Welcome into an episode of Mini Stripes, 10 minutes or less of striping content delivered to your ears every week. Uh, now available on YouTube as well. So if you're listening on the podcast, uh, this video will be on YouTube with some cool visuals added in there. Uh, we're going to talk today about reflective glass beads. What is it? How do you use it? When do you use it? All the information you need will give you a quick rundown on reflective glass beads. So when you first start out, you may get asked to uh, do some reflective paint. And that's what most people think is that it's a special kind of paint that's reflective. Um, if you do need reflective markings though, if you ever run across this, the product you want is reflective glass beads. So what they are, I actually have a little cup here as a little visual for our YouTube friends. It basically looks like white sand. They are very, very tiny white spheres uh, of glass. And what happens is when these get embedded into wet paint, um, they reflect light sources. So uh, headlights from a car, traffic lights, airport lights, things like that. When it hits the paint and it hits those glass spheres that are embedded, um, light is reflected, which makes the marking look like it's a reflective marking. So uh, this is super common, especially on roads, uh, city markings, definitely airports. If we didn't have these and we were driving down the highway at night, uh, especially in the rain, uh, you probably would have a really hard time seeing the paint markings. So this is the product that we use to solve that problem. So uh, when would you need to use these? So uh, most parking lot striping contractors, you don't really need them ever. Um, it's pretty rare to see them specified. This is more commonly used on roads and airports. Uh, however, from time to time, you might uh, get this weird, goofy construction spec that says, make sure that your uh, handicap accessible markings or your traffic arrows in this parking lot are reflected. So keep your eye open for the specs. Sometimes people ask for them, even though it'd be kind of strange to do it in a parking lot. So how do you actually install it? So essentially there's two basic ways to do that. There's two systems of delivering these glass beads onto your paint. So you can do it by gravity or you can do it with a pressurized bead system. So most common for us would be a gravity, a gravity dispensed system. So this could be something as simple as a bead dispenser that is a gravity fed tube from your striping machine that goes down directly behind the paint gun. And what happens is when you squeeze the trigger and you drop that paint, at the same time a little gate opens and it gravity drops these glass beads onto that paint which embeds them in the paint. Uh, you may also see, especially on Facebook, you might see uh, guys who are painting like city crosswalks um, hand spraying, you know, stencils of crosswalk blocks, and you'll see another guy with a big bucket of these, and he's either like grabbing them by his hand or like chucking them in there. That's basically gravity dispense. Um, when you get into more expensive, more elaborate methods of doing this, that would be a pressurized bead system. So uh, manufacturers of striping equipment like Graco, they will sell a pressurized bead system on some of their striping units. This is definitely something you'd see on long line trucks. And just like it sounds, you basically use compressed air and it fires those glass beads right into the paint. So the reason why a pressurized bead system is better, um, even though it's a lot more expensive, is you don't want these little glass beads just sitting on the top of your paint. Like if you could imagine your paint looking at it uh, on the side, obviously it's not very thick, but you really do need these glass beads to get really well embedded in there. If you just like sprinkle them on by hand with some wet paint, what's gonna happen is they're just gonna sit on the top and then as soon as a vehicle hits them, you know, they're not gonna stick around. So uh, a pressurized bead system is generally the better way to go. Uh, not always required though. Um, the other thing you should know about glass beads, there are different types of glass beads. There's a whole like scientific thing behind it that I'm not gonna get into, but basically all you need to know is that uh, your most common type of glass bead, like this one I have here in this cup, this is a type one glass bead. Uh, it's the smallest and most common type of bead you'll use. So most, uh, most contractors who use this around town for like painting crosswalks in town, they'd use that. Uh, you can get into bigger beads like a type two or a type three, but they do get bigger in size and you need some pressurized equipment to actually put them in. Uh, those would be more common for airports, stuff like that. So if you ever need to use glass beads, chances are type one is the way to go. So if you ever do need to do it, 
um, pretty simple. Most of you, the manufacturers, or sorry, your distributors of paint, like your, your paint stores, uh, road, uh, road distribution companies, they will usually sell you these in bags. Most common is like a 50 pound bag. You can buy them in giant totes if you need to. But a 50 pound bag, um, depending on how you apply them, you could get as much as like one 50 pound bag could last you as much as an entire five gallon pail of paint. So basically we, we measure our beads and the amount of pounds we use per gallon. And per gallon of paint, you could use anywhere from five pounds all the way up to like 12 pounds per gallon. Yeah, it really just depends what the application is and how you're, you're dispensing them in there if you're throwing them in by hand. But a general rule of thumb, if you're just starting out and you have this job and you're like, no, I don't know how to quote this, a uh, good rule of thumb is you know, 10, 10 pounds of beads per gallon. So basically every 50 pound bag you buy, theoretically, will do a five gallon pail of paint. So uh, if you ever get find that spec, don't panic. Um, contact your manufacturer of your equipment. That's uh, usually the gravity feed systems for line striping units and parking lots. You can add and retrofit a gravity feed system on there. Um, I've seen guys make their own as well. One thing you should know that if you are going to, um, you know, put beads in by hand. So let's say you have a job where you're going to paint some crosswalks in town, uh, and you spray the paint. What's really important is you have to get those glass beads in there really quickly. Don't wait. This is especially true if you're using a solvent-borne paint. So solvent-borne paint is fantastic. It dries very quickly. But if you wait and you delay from getting those glass beads into the wet paint, like and I'm talking like more than like a second, there's a good chance that your beads are not going to adhere and they're going to fail. Uh, in fact, we had a job last year where we were putting them in by hand with solvent-borne paint and uh, the, the job failed because we just couldn't get them in there quick enough. If you are using a waterborne or a latex based traffic paint, that's actually way more common when you are doing um, reflective glass beads. You have a little bit more time, but same thing, don't wait. As soon as that paint hits the ground, you gotta make sure those beads hit that paint. So that's pretty much it. Glass beads, uh, not too hard to install. You uh, can easily get a gravity feed system to get you going. If you do need to do them by hand, have somebody help you. Have them carry a bucket, fire those things in there as quickly as possible, and uh, you will start producing some very nice looking or reflective traffic paint. If you have any questions on that, hit me up. Thanks so much for listening, guys.